Stephen A., what should it take for L.A. to land him? Well, I think the first things first is that you've got to get another star to join him. You've got to get somebody to go there first. That's what you have to do. That's number one. Mm -hmm. uh, and number two, uh, listen, you can't underestimate what's going on with the Clippers. I'm going to say it here again. Jerry keep West, I keep mentioning oh, it. In some way, someday, somebody's going to pay attention. Okay. You know, I don't have time to be pounding the pavement. That's not my job. That's why we got Wojnarowski and the rest of the crew there. I did that for 15-plus years. I ain't doing that no more. But when it's there, it's there. I've heard Miami. I've heard the Clippers. I've heard these are teams that you have to compete against. Obviously, the Los Angeles Lakers, some would say he's in the mix for that. But in the end, with the young talent that they have, regardless of Lonzo, who wasn't that impressive last night, by the way, Brandon Ingram didn't play. You're the Cleveland Cavaliers. You still lost to them. Julius Randle, I told you about that, brother, and the Energizer Bunny. He's been off the bench for them. And, of course, of course Kuzma. But still and all, if you're going to get LeBron James to come to L.A., to wear the purple and gold, mm -hmm. you need to have somebody of star status to join him. Otherwise, don't rule out Jerry West. Jerry West is the man that stole Shaquille O'Neal like a thief in the night. And Jerry West is competing with Magic Johnson. It is a mistake for anyone to underestimate the influence of Jerry West. I'm going to say it one more time. Okay. That's and Jerry West say. acquired Byron Scott and James were they when the Lakers were like the dominant team in basketball and wound up with the number one pick in the draft. Jerry West, the greatest executive in the history of the NBA. You have, of course, you have to watch wherever he goes. Went up to Golden State. Now they're a dynasty. He didn't create it, but he, he, he didn't hurt. Now he's with the Clippers, yes. But what the Lakers have to do is listen to LeBron. Now, I know you've been talking on the show, Stephen A. Smith, and you're right, of course. Magic Johnson didn't select Luke Walton as the head coach of the team. Correct. So Luke Walton has less rope mm -hmm. than, a, than a coach where he was selected by the incoming regime. But he's been doing well. He's been doing really well. And LeBron James said after the game last night, hey, Magic. He didn't say the hey, you know, but the subtext was, hey, Magic, I like Luke Walton as the coach of that team. You want to know what, like, Isaiah Thomas ain't going to be there next year if they want LeBron, right? I mean, kind of obviously based on what. And if I agree with your signing another star. So, for example, just imagine this. Think about what the Cavs have right now. Compare that to a developing Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, Lonzo Ball, and Paul George. Add LeBron James to that, they with Luke Walton as a coach, they immediately become among the championship favorites, just like like that, let alone, favorites. well, they're among the top four they're, they're, or five uh, teams in the among, NBA, most be, likely. And they would be top three in the West. And I'm not even talking about Julius Randle, because you may have to deal him in order to create the cap space to get LeBron James and Paul George. But then consider what you're going to get for Julius Randle if he continues to be a walking double-double and sometimes it gives you 30-something. By the way, if Julius Randle had a right hand, Stephen A. Smith. Oh, Lord. Oh, Anyway, and I've been saying that, and remember, before he played a game on a pro level, I said my number one problem with him is that he's not ambidextrous. Yeah, no. He's a lefty. And Even he when he goes use, right, he, he finishes he, left. He, he yeah, needs yeah. to learn to yeah. use his right hand. I've yeah. been saying that for years. He is, but but the, this Lakers team, with the young talent they have, and think about this, they didn't hit any home runs with number two picks. They had three number two picks. Got D'Angelo Russell, who can play, not on the team anymore. They had to use him to get out of a bad deal. Lonzo Ball, who's going to be good, I think, and Brandon Ingram, who's already turned. But none of those guys are like slam dunk, perennial all-star. And even with that, they have more young talent and a more promising future than Cleveland. And let me ask you this. How often in the history of Earth has Cleveland won a battle against L.A. when L.A. has better, younger, cheaper talent? 